on the phone last night, dinner with a heavyweight. Here's what I can tell you. Nobody leads. Don't believe what you read on the Internet. Nobody leads. Clippers have had a great meeting. Lakers are telling certain members of the media they lead. They don't know that. And a lot of people I talk to who I trust say Toronto's going to get him for a year. I do. I was last night. I'm texting. I'm on the phone. I'm with executives. I'm with scouts. I go to dinner. I don't. I'm not hearing what everybody's reporting on the uh, www.bandwidth.com. Okay, let me start with that. But if the Lakers do sign Kawhi Leonard, oh, you can just see it coming from Riles. The NBA sky is falling. Crowd. Oh my God! There's a dynasty. It's not fair. Ah, uh, shut up. When did golf explode in this country? When Tiger Woods for a decade seemingly won every major. Highest ratings in NBA history. MJ's Bulls won six of eight titles. The Women's World Cup has a favorite, the United States, that's so dominant they've allowed one goal and only a handful of good shots against goal. The dynasty of the Patriots is the longest and greatest ever, and NFL ratings are the envy of every league. Come on. You're telling me in the South, people aren't geeked up for the SEC football season? We all know Alabama's going to win it. They've been winning it for eight years. You, you, Saturday mornings, people now are turned off to SEC football. You love what you love. I got buddies in Portland, in Utah, in Denver, in Dallas, in Philly, in Boston, in Los Angeles. They're completely energized today. They all think they won free agency. It's just like everybody in the South thinks they had the best recruiting class. That's what we do as sports fans. We don't follow these sports just for winning a championship. If our team is good, our team is growing, our team is ascending, and I think half the league is, you don't think people in New Orleans are geeked about the Pelicans or people in Memphis aren't geeked about John ja Morant? And the other thing, even if the Lakers do land Kawhi, these dynasties never last as long as we think. Kevin Durant of the Warriors won two titles, ended – with two horrible injuries. And oh, by the way, they were lucky to win the second one because they trailed Houston 3-2 to two until Chris Paul got hurt. The Heatles needed a Ray Allen miracle shot to win two in four years. The big three in Boston won one. Shaq and Kobe broke up early. Stop with the sky is falling nonsense. Plus, because everybody's getting scooped up by all these teams... If Kawhi, LeBron, and AD are together, they'll have no bench and one of the league's weakest fifth starters. They'll be one injury away from being a borderline playoff team. They got no bench. None. They're going to have the league's worst, oldest bench. Cheapest, worst, and oldest bench. And a weak fifth starter. They still don't have any great shooters. And by the way, Kawhi's been hurt before, AD has injury issues, and LeBron came off the first and worst injury of his career. One of those veteran players, they've all got a bunch of miles on their legs, gets hurt. They're not winning the championship. So you, 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 70% of this league this morning, minimum, in Utah, in Denver, in Dallas, in Philly, in Boston, in New Orleans, they're energized. I don't think Maverick fans, Jazz fans, Blazer fans, Sixer fans have ever had more hope. I think they're celebrating wildly in Boston today, getting Kemba Walker and Ennis Canner. I think they feel great about it. They didn't like Kyrie. They like the new guy. So there's no sky is falling nonsense. Dynasties, villains have always worked in sports. The Patriots are working. Bama's working. Mayweather gets huge pay-per-view numbers. So did Conor McGregor. Tiger Woods drove us to TV sets on Sunday. Kawhi will do the same. All right, so uh, the team that's getting buried, and I think this is all very comical because I think they're going to be a great team, the Golden State Warriors. Uh, by the way, did you see yesterday? Kayvon Looney signed. They squeezed him in. Dude took a discount. Took a discount. So correct me if I'm wrong. But do you remember the team that swept the Blazers in the Western Conference Finals? It was Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Kayvon Looney, Draymond Green, and they're now all back. Clay will just be back in February and March. All right. Okay. So you're 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 you don't think they're any good. Uh, I'll take them this morning with the Kayvon Looney signing. I'll take my chances with the Warriors in April and May and June. 
Now, D'Angelo Russell got signed, and that's freaking everybody out. Oh, D'Angelo Russell's an attitude. Mark Stein, friend of mine, very respected New York Times NBA guy, doesn't like it at all. He does not like the move. Rick Buecher on my show yesterday, he also does not like the D'Angelo Russell acquisition. This, ooh, that's the, that's the smell of desperation. Oh, my goodness. He does not fit their DNA whatsoever. He's a younger Nick Young. He doesn't play D. He's a me guy. He doesn't play with a high basketball IQ. I'm not feeling this whatsoever. If Draymond Green doesn't end up killing him, Steve Kerr might. <laughs> One of those guys is going to go, D'Angelo, come on. It's just, it's not a good fit. Okay. Pump the brakes. He's going to be there three months. There's no marriage here. There's no photo albums here. They're dating to the trade deadline. Are you telling me D'Angelo Russell, a 23-year-old, great ball handler who can hit threes at the trading deadline, nobody's going to want him. Excuse me. Have you seen the money being doled out to average guys? Nobody's going to want D'Angelo Russell. By the way, can he be in his best behavior for three months? Do you realize his bad reputation comes from what? His two years with the Lakers. A week ago, who wanted D'Angelo Russell? The Lakers! <laughs> Even they wanted him back. Everybody's looking for 23-year-old guys who can put it on the deck, create opportunities, and hit a three. His bad reputation comes from Los Angeles. They desperately wanted him last week if they couldn't get meetings with Kawhi. Folks, Boogie Cousins had the worst rep in the league. The dynasty said, you want to play for us? Here's what I know about the NBA. It's a guard wing league. And if you're in your prime and can shoot threes, people will talk themselves into your talent. And the other thing is, he's only got to be in his best behavior for three months. Even people you break up with the first couple of months always feel great, right? You're kind of attracted. It's like, oh, my God, you overlook their flaws. You're kind of cute. She's really attractive. And you kind of know it's not perfect. And then about third, fourth month, you're like, I got to get out of this relationship. That's all this is. Steve Kerr makes everybody better offensively. Steph Curry's the easiest star to play with. Everybody wants to make this work, including D'Angelo Russell. And ask yourself at the trading deadline, will, will there be a good NBA team at the trading deadline? That's good. But if they had a scoring guard, they talked themselves into being great. I'll give you one Philadelphia. They got Al Horford, and they got Embiid, and they got Ben Simmons, and they got Tobias Harris, and they got all these big guys, and they drafted another big guy. You know what they don't have? A dynamic guard that scores. Would they be willing, maybe at the trading deadline, to send a big out west to get D'Angelo Russell? who, by the way, over in Brooklyn, they watched him have all sorts of success. People talk themselves into talent in this league. The Warriors said, basically, we lost Kevin Durant. Let's just go get an all-star because all-stars in our system, the Patriots and the Warriors are great at this. They bring in guys with a little rub. Draymond Green would never be Draymond Green outside of the Warriors. Randy Moss worked for two and a half years in New England. They just make it work. You're dating for three months. Everybody's on their best behavior. Boom, trading deadline. Some team in the NBA is going to be like, you know, if we just had a guard that could shoot threes, and they're going to make a move on him. It is much easier in this league. In 2019-2020, in people still want Andre Iguodala and Kyle Korver. I mean, these guys are close to crushes because they can hit threes. D'Angelo's in his prime, can ball handle and hit threes. All good. Everybody's bailing on the Warriors. Trust smart. Smart always over time wins. I still think the Warriors are a top four or five team in the NBA. They're just going to have to wait for Clay to get healthy. The closer, closer he gets to being healthy in February, March, and they watch and they see him every day at the facility. Okay, he's about two weeks out, two and a half. Boom, you move D'Angelo Russell. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.